we're doing our midseason awards because most teams are at the 42-43 game point, except for, of course, the Islanders, who uh, the NHL gave an extended vacation to. So we have our NHL midseason awards right here. And we're going to start with the rookie of the year, called the trophy winner. And the first person to turn to is Mr. Anthony Loraco, who is your rookie of the year. Jarvis Zegers, Anaheim Ducks. I flipped these two. Give me one second. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow. My bad, my bad. <laughs> All right, and... <laughs> All right, there we go. Trevor Zeger is the funny, just as the way we planned. Anthony, go yeah, on. Why um, Trevor Zegers? Well, this I know Lucas Raymond leads the bookies in scoring, and he's been he's been fantastic. Um, I chose I chose Trevor Zegers just because, um, you know, he's I mean Troy Terry has has been powering the Ducks really, but Zegers has been right there behind him, um, and for a rookie like him to just have the the creativity to do some of the stuff he pulls off during the games. Uh, we also, the you know, the goal with Milano, but not just the other subtle, like, passes he makes and just the way he stick handles and skates. Um, he skates like someone who's, uh, you know, a 10-year veteran with confidence out there. Um, you know, he reinvigorated the Ducks. Uh, it could go, listen, it, it could clearly be Raymond. It could be Cider, too. Uh, this one's really kind of like a toss-up, but um, I just decided to go with Trevor Zegers. Filk, who is your rookie of the year? Lucas Raymond. And if you look at it, Raymond, I know he's played more games, um, and then he has a, only a few more points than Zegers. Um, he's probably he played about, what, four more games, three more points. Trevor yeah, Zegers is yeah. a minus 11 on a better team. Lucas Raymond is an even rating. And I know that plus minus is not a great, uh, you know, uh, a great way to talk about defensive players, and I'm not even gauging defense by this, but the fact that Lucas Raymond is the leading scorer on his team, has a better rating on a worse team, and is really the driving offensive force when you can argue that Trevor Zegers isn't the driving force in Anaheim. Uh, to me, it's a, it's a no-brainer for Lucas Raymond in this argument. The other guy that I would really, I would probably have Zegers at third for me, the other guy that I would talk about if I'm uh, if I'm talking about Calder votes would probably be uh, more Sider because more Sider plays top pairing minutes in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And that's ridiculous how good he's been playing 22 minutes, uh, 22 minutes and 30 seconds a night. And he's only a minus one on a bad Detroit roster while scoring at over a 40 point pace for a defense. That's amazing. Well, I guess that brings me to my rookie of the year, who is Moritz Sider. But <laughs> I guess I don't have to say anything now. What what a what a way to go. Um Moritz Sider was my rookie of the year pick to start the season, and he's gonna still be there in the middle because yes, he's getting top pairing minutes and also to get 26 points from the back end is phenomenal, especially for a first year player. So uh we're gonna be uh, moving on slowly to to there because after all, for some reason, I'm getting blurry and I just lost Anthony. Hold on, let's see if this. Yeah, I don't know what happened to Anthony. Yeah, there, there we go. I, I'm, I'm, at least I'm not blurry anymore. I looked like an Elizabeth Taylor fragrance commercial. Um, we got Anthony back, yeah, which is what it. matters. My, my iPad died. I had to. Sw I'm sorry, my laptop died. I had to switch to my iPad. All right, I'm just. Yeah. I'm just booting this from the stream, I, although I can't. Uh, I don't know. understand yeah, why it's not doing that. Point. All right, so we'll just leave it right there. By no. the way, Anthony, mine was more at cider. Good thing that Phil took all my time. All right. <laughs> to, to, to the Vesna Trophy winner. Phil, got to start with you. It's got to be one man, Igor Shosturkin. Uh, he, he, he's the league leader in save percentage. He's second in goals against only because of these last couple of games. But uh, and if by point oh one, yeah, by point oh one, and then not only that, but goals saved above expected. Igor Shosturkin leads the NHL by a landslide, and he's doing it 
with uh, a defense corpse that includes defensive liability Keandre Miller in it because he's just been atrocious as of late. Jacob Truba, who's been up and down this season, um, only one really solid, steady pairing. And now Braden Schneider, a rookie who stabilized the third pairing because the corpse of Patrick Nemeth can't be trusted to play any such sort of defense. So Igor, um, not only does he have a case to win the Vezina, he has a case to win the damn Hart Trophy because, I mean, let's face it, Igor Shosturkin has helped carry this team. I'm going to spoil this a little bit because I have to change up the question because Anthony's selection is Igor Sisterkin. My selection is Igor Sisterkin. So, Anthony, the real question is, can you name someone else that can challenge for the Vezda Trophy? Um, I mean, honestly, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be him pretty, pretty handily uh, unless, you know, you know, his numbers really, you know, take a dip here. Um, and another goalie, you know, gets on fire to match it. Um, you know, you could say you could say Jack Campbell. Uh, you know, I think he's second or third. You know, you got Tristan Jarry's hanging around there. Um, but no, no one, no one's gonna really challenge him. Like I said, unless you know, unless something happens to him where you know his numbers really take a dip. Um, but I will say um, that I, I think if I think if Ilya Sorokin keeps playing the way he has been, I think he could end up at least being a, a finalist just because the guy, he's got a 926 save percentage. He's like fourth or third in the league. Um, and he's got four shutouts, which is only one off the league lead of five. Uh, and he's playing for a team, obviously, that was really bad in the beginning of the year and is a non-playoff team. And if you look at the goalie leaders, he's the only goalie up there who's on a non-playoff team. Every other goalie in the top you know, five uh, are all playoff teams. So um, I think Ilya could easily be a finalist, but um, I don't think anybody else is going to really snatch it away from Igor as of this moment. I'm going to throw one more goalie into that mix, and that's going to be UC Soros, who's had a fantastic season so far. Um, he's one of the reasons why Nashville is a playoff team and uh, why they're going to continue to be a playoff team. He has taken that team and thrown it on his shoulders, and they're not even thinking about Yaroslav Askarov at, at, at yet. And they don't even have to worry about him. He's throw, throw him far away. But uh, to go from Pekarene to, actually, if you want to even get more technical, uh, Mike Dunham to Tomas Falcon to Dan Ellis to Pekarene to UC Soros. Nashville's been doing it right with goaltending for a long time. Part of that's to do with the goaltending coaches that they had before. And, of course, Barry Trotz when he was coaching there because uh, Mitch Korn always did a great job with those guys. We're not going to agree on all three for the Norris Trophy. And, Philk, uh, actually, you know what, Anthony, let me start with you. Who do you have for the Norris Trophy since I actually have the right one down for you on this one? Um, I'm going to throw a little bit of a monkey wrench into it, though. I, I originally said Kale McCarr because um, I think he might score 30 goals. Uh, but Son I, bitch. And – I, I, w I would say I would say Adam Fox, but just because I I don't I don't think they're gonna give it to him again. I mean the last person to reach me, I think for Lindstrom. Um and a lot of a lot of guys uh, and I think for him to repeat he would have to like far and away be better than the other guys in terms of points and other things. And there are a lot of guys that are in his that are in his range. Um, so that's why I'm not saying Fox, but I'm going to go Roman Yossi, honestly. Roman Yossi has 43 points. Uh, I think he's a lot better in his own end than Kale McCarr is. Um, I, think, I think Roman Yossi, for my money, is um, probably the second best defenseman in the league. Um, I know Hedman's up there with points as well, and we all know about him. Um, but I, I think Roman Yossi on a national team who's not as who's not surrounded by as much talent as some other teams are, like Kale McCarr has a lot more talent around him in Colorado. Um, you know, Adam Fox has a lot more talent around him in New York. Roman Yossi, um, it's not really the case with him. And, I, you know, he doesn't get much national attention because he plays in Nashville, but 
Uh, he, he's honestly a special player to watch because he could skate really well. Not as good in the car, but he could skate. He's good in his own end, and he can put up the points as evident. I think he's got 13 goals, so even for him, um, you know, he has an outside shot of maybe scoring 30 if he got really hot. But at the very least, he's going to be over 20. Um, so I think Roman Yossi should get recognized. But um, ultimately, I think Cal McCarr is going to get it because just the flash in his game. I've said before, I think the Canadian press is going to make Cal McCarr the Norris Trophy winner. In, in, no matter what, they 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 want to give this to to Kale McCarr, and they almost gave it to him last year in an injury shortened season. Um, I'll go I'll go to me first. Actually, you know what? No, Phil, going to you. I'm going to keep the order the way it is. I, I've got to say, Fox. I, I I you know what? For all the talk about Kale McCarr, Kale McCarr has a better lineup around him than Adam Fox does. Kale McCarr and Adam Fox, despite the fact that Kale McCarr plays about 50 seconds more per game on the power play than Adam Fox does, starts 67% of his zone starts in the offensive zone as opposed to Adam Fox's 54. And the fact that Kale McCarr does not play almost any penalty killing time during the game. He plays about 51 seconds of penalty kill time. And Adam Fox and Kale McCarr are on pace for the same exact amount of points, 88 points. So if you want to talk about goals, okay, fine. Goals, Kale McCarr is easily the best goal-scoring defenseman in the league. No one would argue that. But are goals everything in terms of MVP voting? If if, if that's the case, then Chris Crowder should be the MVP frontrunner right now. Yes! I mean, <laughs> I love the reaction, but it's true, though. So Fox, to me, is not only – he just like Roman Yossi, he's leading his team in scoring despite the fact that he plays with Mika Zibanejad and Artemi Panarin. And let's just put a little focus here on some numbers because um, I know Steven will probably like this one because I see him in the chat. Um, Chris Kreider, uh, out of his 30 goals, you know who's assistant on 18 of them? Adam, Adam Fox. Fox. Adam Fox. Fox. So the problem with the pro- about factoring into his team's offense, Adam Fox is more important to his team's offense than Kale McCarr is to his because Nazem Kadri and Nathan McKinnon are both top scorers in this year. Adam Fox is the only Ranger in the top 12 in scoring. And Adam Fox is 11th in scoring. So... Give me Adam Fox, and if I had to pick a number two, it's Roman Yossi because I could see Roman Yossi winning it because of what Anthony was saying. Roman Yossi leads Nashville in scoring despite not having nearly the talent around him. So I don't even want to hear about Cal McCarr as a runner-up. I'll, Anthony, I'll, I'll you first. Yeah, you first before I go to me. My my problem with the Norris Trophy has always been it's never about, at the core, the best defensive defenseman. It's essentially, in my opinion – a trophy they give to the highest scoring defenseman. Um, yep. and, and that's just, that's just the truth. And what Steven just said above Fox won't win because he won it last year. Um, so when you combine that with Fox, McCarr, Yossi, Hedman, all scoring around the same amount of points, the league isn't going to give it to Fox again, because it's just in their opinion, in order for him to win it for the second year in a row, he'd have to far and away be the best defenseman, let's say, in, in points or, or whatever it is. And unfortunately, that's not going to be the case because you're going to have a guy like Cal McCarr who might score 30 goals. And then you might have Roman Yossi who finishes with the same amount of points or maybe a little less than Adam Fox. Look at the um, comment down there. So, Tyson Barry led the NHL in points last year by defense, and he ended up yep. winning it on the last game of the season. But he was snubbed. Um, the difference between Adam Fox and Kel McCarr is that both the eye test and the analytics tell you that Adam Fox is a far superior defenseman at actually playing defense. So for me, I, I get it. If we're if we're taking our picks, this is this would be my pick. Yeah. But do I think Kale McCarr is going to win it? Yeah, there's a good chance that Kale McCarr ends up winning it because of the things that you're saying. 
Yeah. I'm gonna go slightly with what we're saying, and also I guess we're going with the I'm going with the Oscar theory. They usually don't hand out an Oscar two years in a row to somebody they unless it's since Tom Lindstrom. Hanks in the mid nineties. Haven't since um, Lindstrom. Yeah, so not since Lindstrom. Guys, there's one more defenseman who's kind of emerging to be an elite defenseman right now. Because if you look at everyone else, you got Fox with the Norris, uh, Hedman with the Norris, Yossi with the Norris, McCarr, they want to give him the Norris. But my selection is going to be Aaron Ekblad for that reason. Aaron Ekblad, 39 points. He's second on the Panthers. He's taking all, he's, he is doing everything that a Norris Trophy winner does this year. And that team took a tumble when he broke his leg last year. It's, they, they, he really could be doing it. And I would not be surprised if it ends up being Aaron Ekblad. And I would, I would love it if it's Fox again, obviously, because this, unlike this year, we have, I think this is going to be the closest voting for any Norris of all time. I wouldn't be surprised if this four nomin, there's four finalists. Or I always call them nominees, but uh, they're they're four finalists at the end. Three. So uh, let's move on three. to the Jack Adams. Yeah, three, Mark. Three. Three. Oh, what? Every year the trophy. Has no, no, I know. Every year there's three, four. but I wouldn't be surprised if there's four. The last time I knew that they that they had four finalists for anything, I want to say was the 2009 Vesna, where Lundqvist, Brodeur, and two other guys. I always remembered the, putting that as an asterisk. At, at it might have been the, the 2008 the only, uh, for thing that. That, the only thing that Makar has over Fox is his skating ability. And, if, you know, he's one of the best skaters in the league. Uh, if, yeah. And, and his – and I want to say, I was, I say, his offensive flash. Like, Makar is much more flashier and, and, you know, dangles and whatnot than Fox. But that, that, those are the only two things. Other than that, Fox is the, be- Fox is the better defenseman of the two. Well, ask Jonathan Quick how it how uh, Kel McCarr dangles compared to Adam Fox because he just found out Adam Fox could dangle too. Guys, so best coach of the year, Jack Adams award winner. I'm going to start out with mine. Uh, this is another one where we're not agreeing, which is good for conversation and great for content. But – you got to take a team that they could have had their season derailed 100%. And not only are they on course, but they're the best team in the league. It's the Florida Panthers and it's Andrew Burnett. Uh, th- that they could have easily gone in the tank after Joel Quenville got, let's say they parted ways that with that way. Not, not necessarily fired. But instead, what happens? You know, I think, I think Anthony said in our bar talk segment back then, that he could coach the Florida Panthers to uh, the best record. But it's a different story to actually do it, and he's still keeping them together, even after an injury to uh, to uh, Alexander Barkov. But this is this is a great job that he's doing right now. I'm giving it to him at the midseason point. Anthony, who are you giving it to? Well, not a bad pick, Mark, but for my liking, the Panthers have way too much talent to give it to Brunette. Um I'm going to go with Dallas Eakins of the Anaheim Ducks. Um, you know, this this guy, no no one had the Ducks where they are in the standings. Everyone thought they were going to be a, you know, a poor team again. Um, and, you know, they're four points out of first in the Pacific Division. And, yeah, they have Troy Terry and Trevor Zegers. But if you look at it, it's not like they're being carried by an like John Gibson's a good goaltender, but his save percentage is, is only nine nineteen. So it's not like you know they're being carried by their goaltender, or they have these plethora of stars. Um, you know, outside of Terry and Zegers, you have a you know you have an aging Getzlaf, uh, well, albeit still pretty good, but not nearly the player he was. Silverberg's not really good this year. I mean Henrique Comtois, so they're not they don't have a cast of stars on that team. And he's got a lot out of them. Um, and to do that with such a young team, um, to me, is impressive. Yeah, I could give it, you know, I could give it to Gallant again. You know, he's doing a fantastic job. Um, but, or Sullivan. Sullivan's been fantastic for the Penguins. But when I look at that Ducks roster and seeing where they are in the standings and how they're contending for first in that division, um, I just, I, I couldn't steer away from Eakins in the end. By the way, we're going to do a uh, NHL doppelganger segment 
And eventually we're going to get around to that. But the guy I always say Dallas Egan's looks like is David Tennant, the former Doctor Who. If you ever, uh, I'll put a picture of the two of them side by side <laughs> when we when we do the editing for this. There's Philk, no your coach of the year. I'm going to make the homer pick. I I, I got to go with the line, um just because of the fact that they didn't know this team wasn't expected to be as good as it was. And yes, there are there are some stars on this team. You know, you have your Mikas, your 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 Breadmans, your your Adam Foxes, and of course Igor Shosturkin is a, is a Vezina candidate. But this team is essentially the same team from last year with a couple of downgrades, losing a top six forward, and you added a bunch of role players, and they're actually better than they were last year. So the difference is the coaching. It's it's not the roster because the roster last year on paper was better. Um, with that said, I, I, I don't know if he wins it because I'm I'm more than okay with uh, Dallas Eakins winning it because mm-hmm. I think he's done a phenomenal job in Anaheim. Mike Sullivan, I, I gave him credit earlier on on one of our episodes, and I said that he was probably the, uh, the Jack Adams favorite right now with what they had to go through. The fact that he kept Pittsburgh afloat to get Crosby and Malkin back. I think if you ended it right now, I think Sullivan would probably win it. And I, I do think that Andrew Burnett is actually a really good choice too. So, um, you Dean know Everson would have been a good choice too. Who? Dean Everson and Dean Everson would would be a really good choice too. In Minnesota, they, they've fallen off a bit, but I mean, he would be another good choice too. But I think there are so there are more coaches this year that have a legitimate claim to being the Jack Adams winner than I think I've seen in any year in quite some time mm-hmm. at this point. So, um, Stephen, bringing up a good point here. If you're going to criticize Quinn for all the issues from last season, it only makes sense to credit Gallant with how the team performs now. Because, like I said, same team, worse roster, but better results. You and going with it. Anthony's, going with Anthony's pick, the la- I, I, if I recall correctly, Dallas Eakins took him from one of the worst defensive teams to a goal better defensively. Probably it's the, the best turnaround since Trotz and the Islanders. If Anaheim makes the playoffs, I will call this right now. If Anaheim makes the playoffs, Dallas Eakins is winning the Jackets. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I'll that, say that too. It, that that's it, it's a no brainer for me if they make the playoffs. But I would not be surprised if Mike Sullivan crept in there because he does it every year. Yeah, uh, I, and I, I, you know what? This year has made me a real believer in Sullivan. I was not a believer in him before this year because he got handed some great rosters when they yeah. won those cups in sixteen and seventeen. I, I, I have I'll tell you right now, too. this year has made me a real believer in Sullivan. John Anthony, Hines, John Hines in Nashville. I mean, Nashville, yep. Nashville's four points shy of the best team in the West. And That's a good again, one too. That team, I mean, yeah, they have a you know a North candidate in Yossi, um, and Sauer. That's a candidate, good, Soros. I mean, Forsberg's great. Duchesne's having a resurgent season, but I mean, you know, they got like guys like Tanner Janot, a rookie. I mean, Luke Kunin, Jakob Trenin. So they're not filled with stars either, and and they're getting, and he's getting a lot out of that team. And they're not yeah. just pulling back and doing it defensively. They're 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 on the attack. Yeah, yeah but, but here here's the thing. That, that I would give it to Eakins before I give it to Heinz. Hampus Lindholm has missed some time this year, and there are less big names on Anaheim than there are in Nashville. I mean, look at it. You have a Johansson. You have Duchesne. You have Philip Forsberg. Uh, you, you have Michael Granlund, who's having a resurgent yeah. year, who was really good in Minnesota years ago. I mean, they've got some talent. Anaheim is doing it with all young guys and – a Ryan gets left that somehow defined father. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going to move on to the heart trophy and I have got to let miss the man in the bottom box. Mr. Anthony LaRocco. I don't know why I'm having trouble with that right now. Yeah, Mr. Well, Anthony LaRocco announce who is your MVP. Um, it's one of my favorite players of all time. It's, it's, it's Alex. Ovechkin. Um, you know, 36 years old, 58 points, uh, leads the league. Well, actually, no, sorry, Dreisaitl overtook him with a point last night. He's at 59. So he's second now. Um, I think he's got like a 12, 
maybe something like a 12 point lead on the next, uh, actually more than that, like a 15 point lead on the next highest score on the Capitals. Um, and he's, he's been, he's been amazing. Uh, if you take him off that Capitals team right now, um, I don't, I don't think they're nearly as good as they're as good as they have been playing. Um, he's, he's defying. You just talked, Phil just said, you know, Getzloff defying father time. I mean, Ovechkin's doing it. Um, he, he's, uh, I, I think for me, he's the clear winner, although there's a lot of names in the category. So you could talk Huberto, um, you could talk even Kadri, you could talk about um, Dreisaitl and, and McDavid, even though that team's struggling and they have each other on the team. Um, even, even, even Igor. So there's a lot of guys, but I think for me, it's just Ovechkin when you consider his age and how well he's performing. I mean, he's not... He's on pace to have one of his best seasons of his career that's in a very long time. <laughs> I just had to, I had to put that comment on there, and all I have to say is thank God that your last name is not Laviolette and it's Larocco because Mark would constantly Laviolette, <laughs> Laviolette. There he goes. He got it right. It's it's a matter of it, it's just a matter of sometimes I just I just do the New York thing and never pronounce every syllable or word oh, I'm trying to God. get it out so fast. Filk, you also had Alexander Ovechkin as your MVP. So I'm gonna there. I'm gonna skip and come back to you for possibly a third one. But we've been talking about this guy for the last three weeks, guys, and you convinced me. Justin Huberto. Uh it's Jonathan. Justin. Sorry, Jonathan. Jonathan, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I was probably thinking Justin Trudeau. <laughs> This is why actors always need two takes, guys. Uh, <laughs> Title of my sex God. tape. But it's... Um, <laughs> this is... Uh, Jonathan uh, Huberto. <laughs> oh, boy. Jonathan Huberto, you guys convinced me. I mean, I looked at that, that Panthers roster this morning. Uh, the next leading dis- uh, scorer is a defenseman. And as much as a lot of these guys are producing, Sam Reinhardt's almost got as many points as he did all last season. Uh, Anthony Duclair is having a fantastic year. But, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> and I enjoy all eight. <laughs> Jonathan... All right, good. All right. I-, I-, I hope that would be the case. Oh. Um, but... Uh, but... Jonathan Huber, though, he's he's playing the part of the MVP. I mean, I would not be surprised if if people look at him and just think, where would this team be without him? I, I, I just don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> Justin Huber, though, the Carolina Panthers. <laughs> oh, boy. 8-8 eight, eight is generous. <laughs> oh, the, the, great, the great part about that is, you know, you know just own your mistakes. Own your mistakes in life. That's this is why we are big apple hockey because we have <laughs> fun with this stuff. We just go with it. All right, but Phil, so again, yours was Alexander Ovechkin. Um, make a case for anybody but Ovechkin or Ubido. Wow. Um, I could make a case for Igor Shesterkin. Go ahead. Uh, he he like I said, he leads the league in save percentage. Goal saved above expected. He's been considered by many to carry this team. He's second in goals against. I mean, he is clear cut right now, the hands down best goalie in the NHL. And it's not close anymore with the way that he's played. I mean, you want to talk about something. We all talk about how the Rangers record against playoff teams is sub 500. Well, against playoff teams, with Igor Shosturkin in the lineup, I believe they're nine four and one if the record is correct. Wow. So, okay. Yeah. As 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 a, as a yeah. So the, Igor Shosturkin in the lineup against playoff teams, there's a big difference. So Igor Shosturkin is a guy that I would make an MVP. Uh, I would bring into the MVP conversation. Um, so yeah, that would be me. All right, and our last category for the midseason awards is our midseason Stanley Cup final. Imagine as if the bracket was already done and they came out of this because you guys got three. Uh, we got division winners, all of us except for one of us picked someone that's not leading their division at the moment. Filk, starting with you. Good thing you got that fresh sip of water. Who is your midseason Stanley Cup final? I said Vegas and Florida. 
Um, I, I, I think that Las Vegas getting Jack Eichel back, um, they're not going to uh, have to really move anybody, I don't think, because of all the LTIR that that's going to help them by the end of the season. They're basically pulling a Tampa Bay, if you will, if you want to call it that now. Uh, so I don't think they're going to have to move Riley Smith. I don't think they're going to have to move uh, William Carlson or Evgeny Dadonov. Um, if, when they get Jack Eichel in that lineup, that's going to push one of either Chandler Stevenson or William Carlson down the line, and that's just going to give them incredible center depth. Their defense plays well. They're, they're a very smart and sound structured team. Uh, they've got good goaltending and Robin Leonard. I, I just I, I think the world of them, they're a, they're a scary team, and they've beaten the Rangers handily twice. Um, not that that means a whole lot in the grand scheme of things, but they look really good, and they seem to play better come playoff time. And then the Florida Panthers, I think if they make one move for a top four minutes eater at the deadline uh, on defense, I, I, I think they, they have the ability to play at that point. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, – that was perfect timing, Anthony, by the way. <laughs> that was perfect timing. At first, I'm like, Anthony sees. Oh, wait, no. He's in. <laughs> All right. Thing is, I don't know I don't know if they're going to part with Wondell to get him. I mean, I, they may ultimately say nope. that it's a deal breaker. but uh, Not not for a rental. Uh, what what if you go get Mark Giordano from Seattle? Yeah. I don't think you'd have to part with that. No, no. Well, Anthony, your Stanley Cup final for the midseason. Uh, mine is Colorado versus Florida rematch of the 1996, uh, Stanley cup final. Um, I know we talked about in the past about Colorado style, not necessarily translating to the playoffs and going deep, but, um, I really pondered about it. And I, I think with their, just the amount of skill they have on offense and how well their defensemen skate and card, Devon Tave, Sam Gerrard. Uh, Bowen Bierum, if you know, I know he's dealing with. Uh, is he back yet, or is he still dealing with concussion? Problems? No, he's but, still dealing with the concussion. Yeah. He's only played 18 games this season. Yep. Um, and I, I just think that they're going to add at the deadline. Um, I know there's been a lot of talk over Giroux's fate uh, last couple days, and I've heard guys like Friedman and LeBron mention Colorado as a team that would be in the running for him. Imagine if they added Woo Woo Claude Giroux to their mix, along with Kadri and Landeskog and. McKinnon, um, you know, Burakovsky, they would be a really, really deep team. Um, so I'm going to go Colorado, uh, but I think Vegas can knock them off again. That's definitely a possibility, but my gut, abs, Panthers. You know, it's probably not the best day to make one of these teams that I got selected. I'm going to not spoil one thing. Uh, Florida Panthers are in mine too. The, the team is just so excellent. But I got them playing the St. Louis Blues at the moment, guys. I, I, I like the way the St. Louis Blues have been playing. Wow. And I think there's a good chance they come out of the West as of right now. Wow. Things can, of course, change when Jack Eichel gets into Vegas. Although, when Jack Eichel gets to Vegas, um, does he ask Pete DeBoer when the team's going to choke? Or, um, or or completely just do nothing? <laughs> so, it's uh, they, they got that scheduled. And um, and Colorado, wow. do, they, do they figure out... That you actually need to have defense in order to win a Stanley Cup. I mean, just look at the Vegas series last year when they went up to nothing and it looked like they were on a cruise to that series and then lost four straight. So, the team that has the experience already with winning the Stanley Cup, the St. Louis Blues, don't have to worry about that. They're playing at a high level right now. Yes, they just got, they went up one nothing and then. Lost 7 1 to the Calgary Flames two nights ago. Probably not the best night to put the St. Louis Blues in. It, it is just one game. It was the end of a road trip. They were going through Western Canada and it, they were just looking to get it done. But I, I look at St. Louis, they can easily be the team to look at. And, and again, they're about another player or a defenseman or additional way yeah. Jordan Cairo is playing fantastic yeah There's Jordan so guys have been really really good Jordan Cairo has been you know who, who's been an unsung hero for them and it's not the guy that you're going to think that I'm going to say because it's not the former Ranger thank God Ivan Barba, it's Ivan Barbashev yep he's been amazing yeah. he's been really yeah uh, yeah I mean, and not only not only that but Ryan O'Reilly only has 28 points in 38 games when Ryan O'Reilly comes around the playoff time his game's gonna pick up and it's going to pick up mm-hmm. as the season goes along. So, oh, he's only got Conn Smythe. Rick O'Reilly. 
<laughs> or how about or how about his brother oh, Cal, God. Cal O'Reilly? <laughs> yeah, Ky- Kyle O'Reilly, for, uh, WWE, uh, WWE star Kyle O'Reilly, or yeah, AEW star. O'Reilly, I think he played for the Predators organization. I think he was also in Colorado's organization too. Oh, I'm I'm sorry, Stephen Ivan. I I, I I didn't get literal of my pronunciation. Let's, here. I'm, surprised um, he hasn't, I'm surprised he didn't rip me for Shostorkin over Shostorkin before. You know, we, Shostorkin. There, there was a lot of talk that we among, we had amongst the, the three of us in the off season about Tarasenko and effectiveness in his shoulder, but he's at a point per game. He's got 38 points in 38 games, and he's on, and he's on pace for about 35 goals. Yeah, so uh, he he's he's also playing really well for the Blues as well. Proof yet again that players can have rift with organizations and also put it aside and be professional and produce at the same time. Hi, Vitaly Kravtsov. We hope you come back to New York. <clears throat> and, and uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're going to need you in a month. So don't worry. Dryden Hunt ain't taking your job this time around. Oh, so, boy. guys, as I said below, uh, throw your midseason award winners. Put them all down in the comments below. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.